Morning traders, going to have a look at rules 6 to 7, trading rule 6 to 7 this morning. Uh, trading rule 6 is about pyramiding. It's an optional pyramid rule in a strongly trending market. Add to your position when the previous swing top is crossed. So action point 2 is crossed, uh, maybe by 5 to 7 cents or pips. And then consider how you manage your stops from that point on. Trading rule 7, profits are taken according to our exit rules, which we've predetermined. That is either as a percentage of the previous range or using a two bar exit method, which to begin with is absolutely our preference is to use that uh, two bar exit method from here on in. So we've got a chart in front of us. Let's look at the pyramiding rule. Um, it is an optional rule. Uh, you've got a market coming down here. You can see it gets a little bit messy in here. You've got a legitimate trade. You would have been stopped out. Then you've got a higher top. Uh, you probably would have maybe taken another trade. I'm not sure. Uh, and you've got a lower bottom and then another higher top. So you've got this double top here. Market comes down, forms a lower swing low. So there you have your two points. Price point one, action point two. Market comes back uh 25 percent so probably 25 cents uh breaks the the 50 cent um 50 percent mark so it's obviously how strong a trade is it going to be um it's not by our by our rules a strongly trending market at this stage certainly the the uh, the weekly charts on this particular stock at the time seem to be in the downtrend so that would have added to your confirmation but this is really the first opportunity we get of a decent trade and this is quite a good stock to trade as well so you get your three swing point here uh, swing point three here so your first trade would be uh, at the break of this candle here break of this candle here and what do we mean by pyramiding? We mean adding to a position as previous swing highs or lows are broken. It's not something that I do a lot of. Uh, it depends whether I'm planning on building a campaign and whether I'm really looking to do multiple trades on a campaign, in which case I won't pyramid. If it looks like it's a particularly strong market, I will pyramid. Pyramid generally happens at this point here. So once this, uh, once this trade uh, this top is broken it would need to be definitely a, a less than 50 percent retracement for me to consider a pyramid at this point uh, to show that it's a strongly trending market and i would want everything uh, going for me that i could possibly get because at this point here there's um there's no real reason for me to pyramid because i'm expecting that the market will retrace and come back and probably take me up take me out there so in this instance, I wouldn't pyramid. Typically, that is where pyramiding happens at the break of this swing low here. So we then have, uh, what do we do with a pyramid trade? We usually reduce it. So if we've got two lots here, at say a total risk of 1% of, um, of the account size, uh, then this would be just one extra lot that we would take, short sell it, and it would probably be maybe 0.3%, uh, so a third of a percent. Those are just ideas that you can use. They're not uh, prescriptive in any in any way. Uh, so a third of a percent. The stops would go here, but I would look to move those up a lot more tightly than I would um, on just a normal trade. And the reason is that you've now got extra risk. You've now got 1% risk in on this trade. You've now got 1 and a third percent risk in on this trade so it depends you can take it on indices markets and futures markets perhaps more than stocks certainly on currencies if you think you're at the start of a trend or if you're in the middle of a trend and you've got a really strongly trending market which is what happens in currencies so occasionally you might just get a one or two bar uh, retracement trend and you can you can trade um, using price action swing in there and take a pyramid trade as well so you get an extra lot in if you're pretty confident that the market's going to go up or down fairly strongly on just a simple trending market like this i wouldn't take any pyramid trades i would uh, ignore them but what i would do is i will come to uh, our next rule a little bit later on and i would look to uh, have multiple trades on a market like this for a number of reasons 
So no pyramiding at this point, but it is valid in certain situations. You take it at the break. Uh, once you're in your first lot, you take it in there um, and then move your stops up fairly tightly for that particular trade. So trading rule number seven, profits are taken according to our exit rules, which we have predetermined that is either as a percentage of the previous one, two range or using a two bar exit method. So price action swing, we use a two lot entry system. We use a two lot entry system. We go into a lot of detail on this, uh, both later on in the videos and also in the uh, course book manual as well. And there's a really good reason why we do that, and that is to pay yourself first. And we're going to come to that uh, later on in the videos. But so we would enter with, uh, let's assuming that we have a 1% risk on this trade. So we would enter with two lots. How you break that up is entirely up to you. Some people will say, well, I'll take 0.6% of a risk on one trade and 0.4% on the next. Some people will say, I'll take 0.8% of the risk on the first trade. Or some people will just divide it into, I'll say, 50-50. So I'll take one trade at half a percent, another trade at a half a percent. So we use percentages of ranges to take the initial lot off the table or support and resistance or whatever method you choose to use. Percentages of ranges is a good method because you've got a high chance of getting that first lot off the table. So let's assume, for example, that we're going to take, uh, we've taken two lots at this candle here. And we're now looking to get the first lot into profit. And the reason is that our trade automatically becomes uh, break even at that point. You take the first lot off the table, even if you leave the stop loss up here, which the stop loss would be at this point around here somewhere, even if you're le leaving the stop loss up there until you get another swing or you're, you're following a different exit method down, like the two bar exit method, uh, then once you get that first lot off the table, you've only got half a percent exposed and you've already earned some money in the bank. So your risk is negligible at that stage. That's why we look to get two, two lots off the table immediately. So let's assume for argument's sake that we're gonna take 66% or 75% or 50% or whatever it is that you choose. But for here now, let's say that we're gonna use 66% uh, as, um, as the first lot exit. So we can see that our first uh, one to two swing range is 36 cents. We have a retracement of 25 cents up there, if you can see that. And then our second range repeats the first range, which is again, fairly common. So we've got 37 cents there. So when we take the profit off here, or when we take the, the trade here, we're looking at a range of 66% of this range here. So price point one to price point two, 36 cents. So we get our little calculator out and we do uh, 37 cents uh, times 0.66 is 24 cents down. Okay, so we look from this candle here, the high is 537 minus 24 cents is about 513. So our exit our first exit is going to be here, at this point here. Okay, so the first lot comes off the top more or less at that swing low, which incidentally is a great place to take it if you are going to take it. If you don't have to break any previous swings where you are going to get resistance, you can see what happens, comes down, touches that, you may or may not have just got out. In fact, the, the, the figure was slightly higher. Uh, 513, I think, was about there. I see probably would just have got out of that stage. You'd be out of the market and you'd get uh, your first lot off the table. You can see what happens when the market bounces around that swing, comes back up, drops around, and it sort of plays around this swing for quite a while, for two or three days. But now you're out of the market on the previous range. So we've got, uh, we've taken this at 66%. Of the range. So I hope that's clear. This first range is 36 cents. We've taken a two lot trade here. We take the first trade exit at 66%. That means we've made some profit on the trade. We now have one lot left. And then we use 
our exit method, which we're going to go into uh, more detail later on the two bar exit method, uh, which is a great way to manage a campaign because it keeps you in for the for the longer haul. But that's rule number seven. Basically, profits are taken according to our exit range, which we have predetermined, which we've predetermined. If you're in a really strongly trending market, you may say, well, I'm going to take my first lot off at 75 percent. OK, now 75 percent will be somewhere around there, I would say. I would hazard a guess in the previous range. It doesn't really matter. It's, um, so you may say in a strongly trending market, I'm going to take my, my trade off at 30, uh, 75%. If you have a look at uh, what happened to the next leg, so you've got to swing up and then the market crashes down, it starts to expand, 53 cents down, you may say, I'm glad I took 75% uh, off because we re would have reached that target easily. Um, but this is a, a great little campaign that you've got here in this market over just you know, a couple of months really. It, it doesn't run for more, more than a couple of months. But you can see how if you, if you trade uh, using the rules and you're systematic about it, you can actually make some really good profits on the trade. So that's it for now, rule six, seven. Thanks for that traders.